In this YouTube tutorial, you are gonna find out how to compress properly your Tech House tracks. As always, before I start this video, make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel, and also go in the link in the description because my online course, the 14 day house music mastery, is in the pre-launch phase under the 30 people who are gonna be choosing to get this course for 50% off. It basically explains the whole process of how I produce house music, how I release my tracks with record labels, and I'm trying my best to get you to the same result. Just quickly, compression is basically a tool what every music producer and every professional music producer has to use in a lot of channels, for example, the bass. Sometimes you even use it for the kick. Sometimes you even use it for the vocals, especially. You use it for the instruments, the plugs, for a lot of elements, even for the buses, for the hi-hats. The reason for that is very simple. We as house music producers need to make sure that our music gets to the same loudness as other music producers and EDM producers. The best way how to visualize and explain compression is in the in, in FL Studio. So I'm just gonna quickly show you the track I produced here, and then we're gonna go into the, that compression. What exactly is that? Comment below this video if you think that I should finish this track and possibly release it on Spotify. Let's now do one specific thing. So let's mute all the elements except the vocals because I think the best way to visualize compression is through the vocals. So as you can see, as you can see in those vocal, in those audio, fly. you can see in those audios, if you zoom in properly, you can see that the loudness is very, it's very volatile. It's basically like the crypto market. So be careful here. And um, technically what we need to make sure of is that the loudest part and the, the, the most quiet part of this audio is compressed, which means that the louder parts get basically more quiet and the more quieter parts, the difference between the more quieter parts and the louder quads, uh, parts are less, which means that you can basically hear the quieter parts more and the louder parts as well don't make up so much, they don't take so much headroom from the whole mix. Because imagine now you have when those vocals are playing, you have a hi-hat playing, you have a clap playing, you have a kick playing and exactly the same time when those transients hit, that basically makes in the same moment the track extremely loud but just in the door. So let's 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 show this with one specific thing. So I have the vocals assigned to channel 42, and on channel 42, I have the compressor TR Kotelnikov 2. That is a free compressor, you can use it for free. This is not sponsored by anyone, I'm just using that myself because it's a good version, and I'm just gonna show you quickly how that works. So as you can see here, this here is the threshold, which means if the audio is playing and it goes above minus 22.8 db that's when the compression hits in okay so let's see Feeling fly. not yet let's go a bit more down Feeling fly. compression is basically in in basic terms the, the reduction of the maximum loudness of a specific signal Feeling fly. so you can see here um at minus 33.5 db it is quite compressed and the more this ratio is, if it's three to one, it's it's quite strongly compressed. Feeling fly. If I put it more to, let's say seven to one, it's intensely compressed. Feeling fly. And you can see as well here that this is basically, the makeup is showing here how much dB it is reduced. Feeling fly. Okay. We can obviously then increase the back up again. So it's the same loudness, the maximum loudness is the same the attack basically just shows us when when the signal hits this threshold when does the decompression start so let's say with this attack is really really low the compression is going to start really like straight away after the signal hits this compressor Feeling fly. if we if we increase this attack to let's say 250 milliseconds you're gonna hear the first trend, the transient is gonna be super loud, and then the compressor is gonna hit in. Feeling fly. I don't. And as you can see as well, the release time means when is the compressor released? When is the compressor stop compressing the loudness of the signal? With vocals, usually I recommend to put the attack as low as possible because you want usually the whole vocal to be 
um, to be compressed. Um, I don't want seven to one, that's a bit intense to be honest, because sometimes if you compress too heavily, it basically destroys the whole energy of, it destroys a lot of energy from the vocal, because sometimes in, in music production, things need to have changed, sometimes things need to change their volume to create some sort of tension and release and make it interesting. If everything thing is always the same loudness, it might sound pretty boring and pretty compressed, and it's, you can also compress too much, and if you compress too little, you're not gonna hear a difference. And if you compress too little as well, it just sometimes doesn't make sense. Feeling fly, I don't try. So this is kind of around the amount how I want it to be compressed. I don't even, I'm not even gonna go in depth into the soft knee or the P crest. Um, yeah, and then let's let's bypass it and see what the difference is. Feeling fly. What we need to make sure as well is that if we use this makeup gain is that it goes down to zero, so there's no big difference. Feeling fly. Co hear the comparison now. Feeling fly. Bypassing it. Feeling fly. Feeling fly. I don't try. You can hear with this sort of audio, it's the loudness is pretty much almost the same, but because we're using vocals and because we compress the loudest part, which make then the difference between the quietest part, like here, the most quiet part and the loudest quad, you make the difference lower because this loudness is reduced till here, but then the whole audio is brought up in volume again. So if we, what we can do here is obviously now, I can give you that visually. So let's, this is Edison. I basically just recorded the compressed signal of the vocals. Let's bring it into the playlist and now let's put it up to, norm, let's normalize it. And as you can see now, if you compare the two, if you compare the two waveforms, all right, compare the two waveforms, and you can see that the more quieter part of this audio are no louder, and those you can't hear, you can't see, you can't see the transients anymore like that much. It's basically more even out, it makes more sense, it sounds better. I'm gonna screenshot this actually for the thumbnail, it's gonna look. I use compression usually as well for house music tracks for the bass line because the bass line. Is a is an element in EDM as well, which needs to be very very. Um, it needs to be very static. It needs to be it needs to be very stable. And if the bass line, the sub bass and stuff, if like the, the the tonality and the like, if the loudness is changing all the time, it is not going to sound that good, especially on big subwoofers. If you want to play your tracks in clubs or on bigger speaker, let's listen to the bass now without compression. And now with compression. If you think about it, the loudness is exactly the same. Just the second example, I feel like the bass line has way, way more energy because the difference between the loudest part and the, the, the most quiet part of the bass line is basically reduced and there's more energy and it has more pump. So definitely do this first. What I usually do, first step is bring the threshold down until the compressor gets the signal. Then second step is try different ratios, try three or four to one, five to one, six to one, just also a little bit, don't overdo it, just be really careful with that. And then obviously depending on what element usually, the baseline is usually, I want it to be completely flat, so which means attack as low as possible and release time, something like 390. Um, something like that. It, there's no fist. There's not no set in, set in, There's no set in stone rule. So just try with the ears. And then the fourth step is obviously bring up the makeup gain to make it sound the same loudness as it was before. You're gonna see this here basically. Comparison. Which is really interesting because you hear it even a little bit louder, but on in the software itself, the maximum dB, the peak per, peak dB, is not that loud. So, and I do this basically with a lot of elements. I do this with my hi hats because if you have hi hats and a lot of elements playing at the same time, it basically makes the whole mix super super loud. And those transients hitting in the same moment make it intensely loud for the software, but for our ears. The difference is not that big, but we want to make sure that our mix is getting as loud as possible. Um, you can also use compressors in other ways. For example, I use compressors for my kicks. 
but I use it sometimes even just for this. I, I basically tweak the sound a little bit. So let's hear a difference. So this is without the compressor. And with. You can hear that it, it the, the kick basically sounds a bit more clicky, it sounds a bit more dense, and you can even make it a bit louder at the end of the day. It changes a little bit the kick, so you can try with that, like try the compression in different elements. As I tell you, uh, as I tell you, this is just an idea of how to use compression. Try the compression on each of your elements. Try them on plugs, try them on your vocals and see how it, how it sounds. But the main intention is obviously to bring the mix to the loudest possible way and to bring it to, to zero dB to make it sound as loud as possible because everybody's able to bring your mix to, to zero dB. You just, you just put a lot of gain plugins on the master channel. That's pretty much it. But that's not everything. You need to make sure that it's also as loud as other mixes. And that is one of the tools with every professional music producer has to use. Um, I'm using them as well in my drum buses, for example, where all my hi-hats, claps, snares go into it. Just a quick just a quick note for you. If you want to learn more music production tutorials, go in the link in the description. I'm releasing my 14-day house music mastery course. It's basically explaining the whole thing of how to produce music, the sound design as well, how to, the music theory, mixing, mastering, and it's basically a whole course from me, how I personally release 12 tracks with three different record labels. I'll try my best to teach you the, th the same thing. Um, you're basically going to learn heaps of knowledge. Definitely sign up for this course. There's going to be more infos following very soon. And yeah, compressors, especially like Kotelnikov, they take a lot of, uh, they take a lot of CPU, us CPU usage and <laughs> CPU usage. I'm not from England, I'm German, so don't forget that. So um, yeah, compressors take a lot of CPU usage and um, sometimes what helps to save up the CPU is to just put a compressor on the bus, like for example on a high instrument bus or a vocal bus or the bass bus or the, the drum bus and then you even use a little bit of compression at the master like the master channel just a tiny bit just make sure that you don't over compress it because that can destroy the sound that can make it really boring and really flat but this this example i just try to explain you everything in a very intense way so you can hear it properly but the main intention is to create energy sometimes even tweak the sound a little bit and the third reason why we do it obviously is to make it as loud as possible though anyway thanks for watching this video like this video subscribe to my channel and see you guys in the next video Thank you.